anastomosis around the scapula. Uh, a very important aspect which can be asked as a short node as well as it is also asked during the viva voce. Now when we talk about the anastomosis around the scapula, the first thing which you should always remember is that anastomosis around the scapula is between the arteries which are the branches of either uh, which are the branches of first part of subclavian artery and the third part of axillary artery. So it is the anastomosis between the branches of first part of subclavian artery this is the first part and third part of axillary artery. So the clinical significance of this anastomosis is that, that if there is any obstruction of the artery or any injury of the artery in between this component, in between this, then the circulation of the upper limb is maintained by this collateral anastomosis. There will be a collateral anastomosis which will be in which the blood will be bypassed through this anastomotic network around the scapula and will uh, uh, the circulation into the upper limb is, is not affected. So it is having a clinical significance in such a way. Now the arteries which are participating in this anastomosis, when we talk about the arteries which are participating or this scapular anastomosis, there are two sides of anastomosis. One is around the body of scapula. the sites of anastomosis around the body of scapula or it is around the acromion process of scapula. Now which branches or which arteries are participating in this anastomosis, we will just explain it with the help of a schematic diagram. If this is the scapula over here. The subclavian artery, it continues as the axillary artery. The first part of the subclavian artery, if this is the first part of subclavian artery, the first part of subclavian artery, as we know, it gives uh, what the branches that is the vertebral artery internal thoracic or the internal mammary artery and the thyrocervical trunk. Now this thyrocervical trunk, this is the thyrocervical trunk. It further gives branches and the further branches are suprascapular artery, inferior thyroid artery and the transverse cervical artery. Among these three branches, two are the one which helps in forming the anastomosis over here. One branch is the suprascapular artery this one is the suprascapular artery another branch this is the transverse cervical artery and it gives a deep branch which runs along the medial border of the scapula so this artery is transverse cervical artery. And this is its deep branch. This is the deep branch of transverse cervical artery. Now this deep branch, it is further giving branches which is running towards the body of the scapula and will be participating in the anastomosis. Then as we come over here, if this is the third part of the axillary artery, the third part of axillary artery, it gives three branches. One is the subscapular artery. It runs along this lateral border of the scapula and it gives a branch circumflex scapular artery. So this is subscapular artery. And this branch over here, this is the circumflex scapular artery. 
the circumflex scapular artery. Now over here we can see these are the branches which are forming an anastomosis around the body of the scapula. One branch is uh, this suprascapular artery, another is the deep branch of transverse cervical artery and the third is this circumflex scapular artery which is a branch of subscapular artery. So for the anastomosis around the scapula, the three branches or the three arteries which are participating in this is suprascapular artery. Over here we can mention that it is a branch of first part of subclavian. Then deep branch of transverse cervical. and the circumflex scapular which is in turn a branch of the, uh, uh, the subscapular artery. Now the next we come to this, uh, the site where the anastomosis is around the acromion process of the scapula. I will just draw it with the green color so that it is evident. Now there is a branch which comes from the suprascapular artery and it is termed as acromial branch of the suprascapular artery. Then over here from the second part we have this thoracoacromial artery. This thoracoacromial artery it gives off a acromial branch which will run towards this acromion process. Then from the third part we are having anterior and the posterior circumflex humeral artery. This is a posterior circumflex humeral artery. This posterior circumflex humeral artery it gives off a branch which runs towards the acromion process and these all three acromial branches they form anastomosis around the acromion process. So around the acromion process. Over here three arteries are there which anastomose and all three are the acromial branches. The first one is the acromial branch of suprascapular artery which is arising from the first part of subclavian. Then we have acromial branch of thoracoacromial. And thirdly the acromial branch of the posterior circumflex humeral artery. So this is about the anastomosis which is around the scapula, the body of the scapula as well as the acromion process.